This episode of the Topcast is proudly supported by Tonebase.co. And I would say actually during this, like with my studio moving online, I actually moved all of my students to afternoons, like earlier afternoon. So that after dinner, some days dinner slightly later, but by 5.15, I'm done teaching. Because mm. I realized very quickly, I was burning out fast. I'm used to having hours of silence during the day and I do not get that anymore. Mm. And so being around people all day with no break and then teaching in the evening was too much. So I just actually contacted Mm. all my clients and said, is there any possible way? Please, is there any possible way? Hi, teachers. Welcome back to the Top Music Teachers Podcast. You're listening to episode number 196 and a very special welcome to my Top Music Pro teachers. I hope you're all doing well out there and uh, looking forward to the upcoming summer if you're in the Northern Hemisphere and some winter holidays coming up down here in Australia. In today's episode, we have Top Music Pro member, mother, teacher and blogger, Rosemary Penner, talking about balancing teaching and running your studio with busy family lives. As a relatively new parent myself, we welcome two boys into our family at the start of last year. I know all too well how hard the juggling act can be, especially during the recent lockdown period. So in today's episode, which is the first in a two-part series, we start to unpack burnout and how to avoid it, setting reasonable expectations, building effective routines, and trying to get the right balance with Rosemary's ladder of priorities. You'll love hearing about that and how it all works. Now, a quick couple of reminders. Earlier this month, we announced the introduction of two new membership levels for Top Music Pro, meaning that professional support and training is now fully customized to your own needs. Check out all your membership benefits, including our great sheet music discounts and full access now to the new tonebase.co platform at topmusicpro.com where you can see all the new membership options. And a reminder that today's show notes and transcript are now available at topmusic.co slash episode 196. My guest today is an author, boutique piano studio owner and writer. She has a Bachelor of Education with a focus on special needs education and has been teaching for over a decade. One of the main things she's learned is that as educators, we never really stop learning. When Rosemary isn't teaching, writing or researching, she loves to spend time with her family, reading copious amounts of novels, enjoying a cup of tea or baking vegan goodies. She's a tea fanatic and mother of twins and her website, The Unfinished Lesson, is her guide to all the skills that take teaching and running a business from overwhelming to fulfilling. She provides creative strategies and smart tech ideas to solve the challenges of running your business while keeping students coming back for more. Oh, and she also loves Argentinian tango and hip-hop classes. Welcome to the show, Rosemary Penner. It is so cool to have another member and our superstar Canada forum leader on uh, this podcast today. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here. So you've been such a great support to so many teachers inside our membership, answering questions, asking questions, telling people about what's on, what's coming up. So thank you for all that you've been doing to support our members. It's been wonderful. Well, not a problem. Like I just absolutely love it. And the genesis of this podcast is actually from one of our member webinars where you joined us and and we were talking a lot about how to look after ourselves during this current crisis or you know coronavirus situation which is affecting the world but also in an ongoing capacity how to better look after ourselves because it's so easy isn't it as as business owners working from home more, more often than not to be find it very difficult to separate work and family particularly if you have a family with children too so there, there's some of the things we're going to be unpacking today aren't they oh uh, yeah absolutely yeah once you throw kids in the mix like the gloves are off. I mean, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Don't I know it? Yeah. Um, so, look, before we get started, just tell us a little bit about where you are in the world and what your studio looks like. All right. So, I'm in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. I have a travel studio, though there is a big change coming up. Ooh. I know. I'll tell you guys about it later. Okay. So, good. it's a, we use a lot of tech and off the bench and music lab so that I can creatively teach and my students can really explore music concepts. I started the studio when the twins were three years old. They turned four by the time I started teaching. So some of the tips I'm giving are from that time period. Um, And Mm -hmm. then actually a year after I started the studio, we had a really big recession here in Calgary. So I thought that that kind of fit in well with, I mean, granted, this is way more than what that was. (laughs) And we thought that was bad. Um, But yeah, yeah, I'll talk a little bit about that. How old are your twins now? They are turning 12 this summer. 
Oh, there you go. Look, time flies, right? It does. Um, and you did say traveling studio. So just explain what that means in case it's not familiar to people. So what that means is that my house gets to stay messy. My kids get to be loud <laughs> and I get to see where my students teach because I go visit with them, their families and their pets. Right. Great. So, yeah. and how many students do you visit uh, regularly before lockdown situation? So this year I pulled back because I was planning on doing um, a licentiate teaching diploma. Oh, wow. Okay. So I only have, I think like 10 this year, but I've had up to 21. Mm -hmm. 21 was a bit much I found in terms of, again, that whole balance thing. (laughs) Um, Mm. 21 was a bit much kind of around like 15 to 17 is my sweet spot. If I'm going to be traveling. Mm. And when you are traveling, of course, the you've got to factor in the travel, the travel time and the travel cost. And that that's a big opportunity cost missed with when it comes to family time, I, I imagine. And I have a feeling you might be talking about that. Yeah, though it is really good professional development time. Like I listen to your podcast all the time when I'm traveling. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> it's the best time to listen to podcasts, isn't it? Yeah. I actually, I don't drive nearly as much now. Well, none of us have for the last couple of months, obviously, but even before that. And, and I do miss, I have to make time to listen to podcasts and I have to put headphones on when I'm washing up or cooking or something like that. Now, it's not quite as easy as it was. Yeah, I'll share later when I do my podcast listening because it changed for me too. Oh, cool. Okay. And um, you've also got a great blog and um, you've got online income streams too. So just tell us about those quickly. Sure. So um, I have a blog called The Unfinished Lesson. And the reason it's called that is because I feel like we never stop learning. And um, so life is really an unfinished lesson. And so I really believe that you can have balance for life and you can have creativity in your studio. I don't think a, a teacher, a studio owner should ever have to choose between those two things. And yet a lot of us, if we want to be creative, feel like we can't have balance. Mm. And so um, it's something that's really important to me. And yeah, there I share creative strategies and tech tips for everything from admin to the teaching side. And like the activities my students love, I make sure teachers get access to those too, because I want their students to enjoy them as well. Fantastic. Well, we're going to have a bit of a bit more of a free flow conversation today. We've got four kind of areas we're going to be looking at in today's podcast. We're going to be talking about trying to avoid burnout. And all of these topics are related to both the situation the world is in now, but also if you're listening to this um, in the future and life's back to normal, hope you're enjoying it. <laughs> Hopefully, it'll, it'll be the same, uh, be just as useful then um, and perhaps even more so. So um, avoiding burnout, setting expectations that are reasonable for yourself in this time and and also the normal kind of time, using technology to help and some apps and things, uh, tips you've got for that. And also um, talking about preconceived notions of that can hold you back in business. I'm really keen to unpack this one as well. So let's start with the burnout. And it's not that fun to start with, (laughs) but but it's so, so important. So where do we start? Okay. Well, yeah, I know burnout (laughs) is kind of a not fun topic. So Here's actually something I heard a few years ago, because I used to feel really guilty about this, like especially September when students would start and recital time and registration time, because those were the times I was the most busiest and there wasn't really great balance. Mm. So it turns out, actually, you can't have work life, perfect work life balance because you're never going to spend an equal amount of time on your work as you do with your personal life. And part of that is because we need to sleep. But the other part of it is we put more time during the week and hopefully many of us take time on the weekend that we can have more personal time. So once you realize that you can't have perfect balance, that it isn't always going to be perfect, what you have to do is really choose what's important to you. So there's this exercise that I I really recommend everybody does. It's called a ladder of priorities. So if you imagine a ladder and at the bottom, you've got your foundation, you want to make sure that's solid because otherwise that ladder's falling off. Mm -hmm. Well, you're falling off the ladder. It's not going to be fun. And so at the bottom, (laughs) what is that one thing that if that falls apart, everything else just kind of snowballs from there? Or if you want that thing that's most important to you. So when I was younger, financial security was actually that one for me. If I didn't have money in my savings, if I didn't have money in my checking account, I was incredibly stressed out. It was hard for me to really be able to do anything else other than how am I going to get money in the account? Mm. And then I had kids. Ironically, I didn't realize this until after Matt leave. So I'd been 
off for a year, I went back to school and realized, oh my goodness, my priorities totally changed. I had no clue. And now it's my family. And so if my kids are sick, chances are that I'm not going to focus as well, right? Or I'm not Mm going to be able or willing to take on as many things as when everybody in my family is doing well. Mm. So, and that's different for everyone, but yeah, your foundation. And then once you have that, what's the next thing that when you've got that, okay, everything's good. And then you just keep going up and you figure out like your top four. Mm -hmm. For me, every business decision I have made since I started my studio has been based on that ladder of priorities. And I don't regret a single business decision because they were all based on what was absolutely important to me. Mm. So I would say that's the biggest way to avoid burnout, right? Yeah. And so what are some of the uh, the other rungs on your ladder, for example? Uh, and how high do you go with, with this? Um, I would do maybe three or four. Okay. So for me, actually, um, being able to learn new things is really important to me. If I'm not learning new things, then I find I get really frustrated mm. or bored and nobody wants me bored. Like my family right. dreads <laughs> yeah. when I am bored. And the other one is creativity. I need to have the freedom to be able to try and experiment with things. And that's part of the learning process for me is that I always want to be able to just express myself in a creative way. And whether that's teaching, whether that's writing, whether it's conversations like this, you know, mm-hmm, whether it's mm-hmm. parenting, um, it's all of it combined together. So, yeah. Yeah. So to put it in an example, let's say your studio's got 15 students and you're really comfortable with that. And you've got the option to take on a family with two more kids in the one family. And you think, oh, whoopee, great. I've got some extra cash. That's fantastic. But I'm going to be trading off uh, time because they're a little bit further away. So I can charge a bit more, but I'm losing time that I would otherwise be spending on one of my four rungs. And maybe the rung that's most effective is the ability to learn and take another course online or whatever it is. So that's where you would look at that ladder of priorities and go, uh, no, this isn't actually, I can't actually do this and it's not going to be beneficial for me. Yeah. Well, and you can think of it also as if you were to go against something on that rung, are you going to regret that in a week or a month or a year? Right. What mm. are, we always have to, there's always a give and take with balance. And so, yes, you are getting more money, but like you said, you're giving up time. And, you know, is that time something you're willing to give up? in my case, for 10 months, because Mm. that's what my schedule is. And so, yeah, I'm really strict. Like I never take students on the weekends. I don't teach Mondays or Fridays because those are my office days. Plus that's when most of the time the kids are off school. Right. Yeah. Most holidays. Yeah. Yeah. And so Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, if someone can't fit Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday within my very set teaching times, Mm -hmm. I go, you know what? You sound amazing. I would love to work with you, but it's not going to work out. I can give you a name of other teachers or Mm. we can try again in the future if something opens up. The hardest thing is, of course, when you're getting started or when that the money one is the bottom of your ladder and you need it the most, I guess. Uh, But that's where the priorities come into it. Yes. Well, and honestly, when Mm. I started, yeah, like I taught Saturdays like everyone else. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) Yeah, I had a family of five kids. Oh, I did three, so you beat me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, and then they moved out of country, and I could have had a sixth. They had a sixth kid, and they're like, "Oh my goodness, guess what? She's going to be your piano teacher." But then they moved. But when okay. they stopped Saturdays, I shut Saturdays down. They were the only mm. reason that I did, and they they lived clear on the other end of the city. But it was worth it because it was five. So, mm, yeah, absolutely, yeah. And so you've got some ideas about um, expectations as well at different periods in your life before your kids are at school, if you have kids, and then after they're in school. Should we talk about those? Yeah, absolutely. So I would say actually for right now, like if you're listening to this when we still have the pandemic going on, give yourself grace. (laughs) Yes. We all need to give ourselves grace. My goodness, normally. Deep breaths, pats on backs. Well, and the expectations are different. So Mm. my children have way more screen time. They play more Mm. video games. Like when they were attending school and we had our regular schedule, there was days during the week, they had no screen time Mm -hmm. unless it was for homework. Now, Mm -hmm. Well, they're probably going to play video games for like two hours minimum each day. I'm trying Mm. to get it down now that we're like settled in, but 
We just have to. We, it's our. I'm glad to hear this, Rosemary, because it's our biggest fight that we have with our boys too is about screen time. And uh, and you're right. So so our our policy normal time three hours a week. You choose when you want to use it. Mm-hmm. Now it's an hour a day, yeah. <laughs> plus some more on the weekend if you earn bonus time and, and realize that things are a bit different. What about when life returns to normal? Any thoughts on that? So before your kids are in school, any par- any teacher who, once they've had the baby, just like does the swaddle and teach or like they've got him in a rocker, oh my goodness, like hats off to you. I think it's a really fabulous strategy. I don't really remember a whole lot about the first year of the twins because I got no sleep. They didn't let mm. me sleep during the day until they were almost a year old. So yes. I was very tired. I have a few memories, but yeah. So if you can do it, great. If you are like me and that first year is just a blur, don't feel guilty about it. You know, if you need to take a year off from teaching, you will build your studio back up, you know, or if you only can take on, say, a a few students, go for it. And if you can take on more, then that's fine, too. Once your toddler's on the move, then I would probably suggest having someone else watch them because Mm. chances are you're going to find it hard to focus on your student, right? Yep. So when the boys were three and I was starting the business, I vividly remember attempting to get my studio website done. Mm -hmm. And I'm like trying to figure out HTML code. And I've got (laughs) two little ones on either side. Mommy, you got to see what I made. And it's Mm. like all this Lego stuff. And I'm going, okay, buddy, but I just, I got to finish this. So, um, yeah, I mean, when they're toddlers and especially once they start talking, it can be difficult. You might want to keep your studio smaller. Again, all of these suggestions are, you have to figure out what your situation is, right? Mm. When I started teaching, I was really fortunate that my in-laws actually took the boys one afternoon and evening a week so that I could start teaching earlier because then that way I didn't have to wait till my husband was home. Because as you can imagine, if I always have to wait till my husband gets home, and then leave to teach, my window for teaching was even smaller. Oh, it's tiny, yeah. 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 I know that the after school hours are really popular, but you have to decide, do you want to be able to say goodnight to your kids? And that's where your ladder of priorities comes in, right? If mm. you want to say goodnight to them, don't feel guilty about saying that you're not going to teach past a certain hour so that you can do that. Because at the end of the day, I highly doubt that you're going to regret turning down a student that you will probably not remember their name or anything about them five years from now or even a year from now if it means you remember all those nights you got to say goodnight to them. Mm. You might want to streamline your studio offerings. Like if you already had started your studio and you had like all these different programming options, just streamline it. Maybe you might not do all the group lessons. Maybe you might not do all the recitals. Maybe you might not offer like extra master classes and have your students in exams. Maybe it's just going to be a year or two of of lessons. I I don't want to say just lessons because I think that they're really powerful, but just streamline it, Mm. you know, and if you need to take on less students, then, then go ahead and do that. Like your business will be fine. I think that's the big thing I want to say is, is your business will be fine. I've pulled back over the years sometimes. And every time I've been able to get the students that fit perfectly for my studio afterwards. I think there's one good thing that has possibly come out of uh, the lockdown situation and everyone moving to online teaching is that we have an opportunity now to teach people during the day in other time zones if we wanted to. So, uh, you know, if, if you wanted to teach kids in the afternoon in California and you live in New York, then you've got that three or four hour time difference or whatever it is. Similarly, in Australia, here across our country, so yeah, three. three hours, yeah. So, so we do have that opportunity now that we've all been forced into. Uh, and while online teaching may not be for everyone, it may not be the perfect solution. Maybe it does give people, perhaps, if you do have really young kids and your parents can take the kids, but only during the day, then maybe you can teach for a year doing online things during the day in another time zone or something. There's flexibility, or just focus on homeschooling students as well, right? Right. That yeah. your marketing may change. Um, and I would say actually during this, like with my studio moving online, I actually moved all of my students to afternoons, like earlier afternoon, so that after dinner, some days dinner slightly later, but by five fifteen, I'm done teaching because mm. I realized very quickly I was burning out fast. 
I'm used to having hours of silence during the day and I do not get that anymore. Mm. And so being around people all day with no break and then teaching in the evening was too much. So I just actually contacted Mm. all my clients and said, is there any possible way? Please, is there any possible way? So even right now, um, I know a lot of studios are wrapping up, but I mean, that's something to keep in mind, right? That you can do that. Yeah, absolutely. And um, for teachers that whose children then move to during school hours, then you've obviously got more flexibility and you can also, I guess, look at even as you've done, well, what else could I do that's not teaching? Yes. Well, and just keep in mind that at the younger grades, they expect volunteers. I did not budget for <laughs> that. So the boys went into preschool. I'm like, I have three mornings I get to teach. And all of a sudden they're going, well, we need volunteers for this and this. I'm going, I'm working. I don't know what to tell you. Like, I can't be there. Yep. And then, yeah, my husband ended up switching jobs where he was able to take days off. Um, He hadn't been able to before that. And so he's been on more school trips than I have because he's been able to take that time off. I try to be really careful that I don't about the only time that I actually tell my clients like, hey, can we re- can we just not do lesson this week if there's an emergency or actually school concerts? Because those are once mm. a year. And I go like, it's yep. just, it's this one night and they're all really great about it. Yeah, go hear your kids sing. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> this episode is presented in collaboration with our friends at Tonebase. Tonebase is an online music education platform dedicated to making the highest level instruction affordable to students, teachers, and amateurs around the world. The Tonebase Piano Artist roster features world-class concert pianists and recording artists like Garrick Olsen and Simona Dinerstein. Legendary musicians like Leon Fleischer, gold medalists of Chopin, Clyburn, and Queen Elizabeth International competitions, as well as professors from top conservatories like Juilliard, Curtis, Eastman, Yale, and Peabody. In a library of over 150 high-quality, in-depth videos, these artists share their insights with you on the craft of piano playing in all its breadth, including tutorials on intermediate and advanced repertoire, workshops on technique and musicianship, as well as interviews and special features. As a privilege of joining Top Music Pro, members receive free, unlimited access to the Tonebase piano platform. Join Top Music Pro to experience the incredible resources Tonebase has to offer at topmusicpro.com. And for more information on Tonebase, visit tonebase.co slash piano. That's tonebase.co slash piano for more information. One of the other things that come to mind as well when it comes to uh, burnout and looking after your own health is things we don't often talk about, which is movement, activity, uh, fitness, and eating as well. And any thoughts on those topics too? And, And those healthy routines, I guess, for for your, both your mental health and your physical health? Yeah, I would say, um, so in terms of that, just remember you can't do everything for everyone all the time. So one of the best ways to create those routines is to see where you can get help. And that includes your kids. So in terms of mental health, you know, what do you need to do away from all your responsibilities that's going to help you stay sane right now? Um, there's days, so I'm, like I said, I'm used to having hours of silence during the day, or if Mm -hmm. I'm listening to music very loudly, but it's my music, right? Mm -hmm. It's me singing Mm -hmm. for the first few weeks. I actually had to put my noise canceling headphones on like every night, um, in the evening. (laughs) Yeah. For me, like ocean sounds, the river flowing, do not let any birds or like crickets. No, it needed to just be water. And it was enough to kind of just help me reset. I needed it mentally because, yeah, the first few weeks I was exhausted, not just Mm. from all the research and switching over, but the auditory stimulation, like you said. To everyone at home. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm like you. I I work from home during the day and it's it's quiet and I get six hours of clear, quiet time to work by myself and with with the cat and we just chill out while we're working and it's quiet and calm and and that has been one of the hardest things for me because I, I quite like being at home as well, but I need that time to myself. Yes. As well. Yeah. It's, that's been hard. Well, yeah. And I would say just definitely like keep something for yourself. We all have responsibilities and whether it's with our kids and our spouse and our business or whether um, it could be aging parents or, or whatever it is we're doing, we need something that's fully our own. 
And yeah, Mm. especially when my kids were younger, I didn't necessarily realize that until, yeah, I was burning out and it's like, oh yeah, no, you can't do that. You don't have enough to give if you're not taking that time. Um, Mm. In terms of your physical well-being, I'm a huge proponent in trying to like have movement. So I have um, like an interval timer and I have this Pavlovian response to it now that every 15 minutes, this thing dings and I'm like, oh, push the chair back and stand at my desk. I will be mid conversation with my husband or my kids. It dings and I automatically do it. Like, Mm. so, so every 15 minutes you stand for 15 minutes and then sit for 15. Yeah. And then it does it for an hour and then technically I'm supposed to have a break, but I'm really bad about doing that because once I get focused, I just want to keep going. So then I try to remember to get it going again. Well, look, you've got to find whatever way that you enjoy. I think enjoying physical activity is one of the most important things. So I love cycling. I've always enjoyed it and I don't mind doing it. And I find it kind of fun for some weird reason because other people hate it, even on stationary bikes. Mm-hmm. Other people love uh, running, uh, tennis, whatever it is. But find that passion that is also physical. I think that's such a great thing to to strive towards because then you'll enjoy doing whatever it is. And if that is with someone else, if you enjoy working out with someone else and that gives you the desire to do it or, you know, makes you get up in the morning, then yeah, you know, go for that as well. If you prefer it on your own, then that's fine too. But it's got to be something. You've got to keep moving because we have such sedentary jobs. So I want to move on to um you've got some ideas about to do lists. Yeah. <laughs> which I'm really keen to hear. Was there anything else just wrapping up some of those thoughts on on looking after yourself and getting the balance um, and burnout? Anything else to cover there before we move on? Um, I would say, especially right now, keep lines of communication open. So my husband, I couldn't figure out why he kept wanting to go to Starbucks like every day. I'm like, you can just make coffee here. By the way, all the coffee lovers and Tim, I believe that is also you. I'm sorry. Okay. Mm. I don't drink coffee. So I don't under, uh, to me at all. Oh, well, just end, end podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was like, why do you just make it here? Like, honestly. And then it turns out actually that was his time. That was mm. his like mental and physical break from the rest of us that he just needed, right? That he needed Mm -hmm. to be okay every day. As soon as he told me that, I went, okay, well now I'm not annoyed that you're leaving every day for like a half hour or whatever. Cause yeah, I get that, right? Mm. This right here in my office, this is my place I go to when I need to just be away from everybody. Cause nobody, Mm -hmm. well, they come down, but it's usually to like print something off or whatever, right? Yeah. Um, And I would say definitely with your kids, just don't be afraid of involving them. So our kids have been told since they were very young that they're an integral part of how our family functions. So that means like when they were really little, they would be pulling salad out of the bag to put into the container while I, or like into the bowl, and then I would be cutting up more veggies. Mm -hmm. And that would be like when they were one and a half, two. Whereas now they're almost 12, they're helping make meals. So one of our Mm. kids was making banh mi this week. And the other end was making chili. They still need supervision because sometimes they want to try and leave the kitchen when things are on the stove. And we're like, no. <laughs> what are you going to say? When things are on fire. Yeah. <laughs> My brother actually did that multiple Bye. times, which is why we're so finicky about that. Yeah. Um, my brother did that. So we right. learned <laughs> do not let them. We do cleaning blitzes as a family. So I set the timer and the boys know these are the tasks that they need to do each year. They've been given more responsibilities. And so we try and get it done in that time period. And then we all get a reward if we get it done in that time period. Mm -hmm. When they were interested in what I was doing in the business, I would get them to help me with stuff. So client gifts, because usually I had an assembly line. I'm like, okay, well, here you go. You're going to pick this up and carefully put it in there. They loved that when they were younger. Not anymore. They've informed me that they now know better that it's just work. But when they're younger, oh man, you can get them to do all sorts of stuff, you know, or when they were younger, snuggle breaks. So if I needed to work in the evening in my office, they would come down to say goodnight and um, they would sit with me in my chair. Um, I didn't have a standing desk at the time. And we'd just listen to whatever the music was. Usually it was jazz. And I'm like, well, this one's called, I don't know, autumn leaves. Can you hear the leaves? Mm. And it was just that like five minute break with them that In the grand scheme of things, five minutes for each of my kids in the evening, uh, you know what? It wasn't like it made my work longer, right? So I would just encourage, yeah. I mean, when they make contributions, really 
thank them for it, acknowledge them, and uh, yeah, keep the lines of communication open, especially right now. Mm, absolutely, yeah, and getting them involved. Yeah, getting kids involved in in whatever they can. Mine love <laughs> love helping with YouTube videos when I'm recording things because I think that having a YouTube channel is the coolest thing. Yeah. For me, it's just work. And <laughs> one of the <laughs> I was unboxing an iPad and uh, doing a review. I don't know if you saw that on YouTube, but one of them crawled under the table while I was doing it, and, oh, and it appears in this video as this this face under the table. <laughs> So I'm, I'm all for getting them involved, but uh, yeah, expect the unexpected. Yes, yes <laughs> <Sometimes>. absolutely. <laughs> all right. Tell us your thoughts on to-do lists because I, I use uh, a project management tool called Asana, which is is free and I love using for to-do lists. Um, but I do find my lists get longer and longer. You can never do everything. It gets really frustrating to look at. <laughs> Any tips? Um, well, to actually piggyback on that, we have to realize we are not machines. We aren't going to be able to handle everything the same every day. And especially when you have kids, like you said, you have to expect the unexpected. So, um, and I'll tell you guys a little bit about that. I think probably later on in the, in the podcast, but basically choose the method that works the best for you. So I've tried almost all of them. Um, You can list it all. You can do it in a bullet journal. I found I was just having to transfer things over too much, but some people absolutely love a burnt, a bullet journal. Go, uh, Google Keep actually was my go-to before the pandemic because when a client asked me something and I needed to send them something I didn't have with me, it's a pretty rare thing because I keep everything on my devices, almost everything, but I would just write it in my Google Keep. Or if I was if I got an email or a text from a client at a time when I don't normally respond, I just put it on there. Right now, I'm actually using, yeah, I've got like a, Staples gave out these teacher appreciation journals. <laughs> That's what I'm using right now because I need a little break from a screen sometimes. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, Google Keep was like my list at all though. You can use the Eisenhower matrix. So that's the urgent, what is it? Urgent and important. Versus important. Yeah, mm-hmm. I can actually, I think I might have a link. There was a really cool one where it described it. Urgent and important is you got to do it now. Not urgent, but important. You decide and then schedule it, which I think Mm -hmm. is sometimes the thing that we miss. We have to schedule it. Mm. If it's urgent, but not important, delegate it. And then if it's not urgent and not important, just delete it. Like seriously, just delete. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a I've got a video on my uh, YouTube channel about the matrix too, so I'll I'll pop a link to that. And if you've got one as well to share, we'll put that in the show notes. Okay. Yeah. Um. Mm. And so yeah, mine honestly is my top three. That's my favorite. So I will have a big long to-do list, but I will, I will mark everything. So my first thing, my second thing, my third thing. The reason for that is then you can tie that in with your ladder of priorities, right? And you can make sure that the things you're spending your time on, whether your kids completely throw a wrench in your day or not, or whether a pandemic hits and everybody's home and, you know, you're not getting stuff done, but those top three. Some people will say top one or top two, whatever it is, but I probably wouldn't go more than three because regardless of what happens in your day, you can probably get those three things done. And then everything Mm. else, you can just let it go. Let it go. Yes. (laughs) And if you want, sing the song. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So do you do that each morning? You look at your list, which might include many more than three, and you go, right, today's priorities, I think because the kids are here and I've got to look at their maths then and I reckon I can do these two today and that's what I'm going to do. Is that the kind of way you approach it? Yeah. um, I try and do it in the evening. Um, I find Mm -hmm. actually... The night before? Yeah. In the evening, I've been getting more stuff done in the last few weeks. For whatever reason, that seems to be a good time for me. Usually Mm -hmm. isn't. I don't know what happened, but I'm going with it. But yeah, or the morning. But before you start anything, and it's a great way. um, So if I have to remember things, I can't sleep uh, because I'm like, oh, Mm. but I have to remember. So it's really great for me to be able to just write it down. And then, yeah, I my husband goes, well, what about when is this thing? I'm like, I don't know. Look on the calendar. Like I wrote it down. I don't have to remember it anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm famous for flights. I get asked, so when's your flight? I'm like, I don't know. I know it's on this day in the morning and I will look the morning before, or if you need to know, fine, I'll look it up, but I have no clue. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not something that I feel like I need to remember. And so, yeah. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. You get it out of your head on the paper. 
or whatever it is, and you don't have to worry about it anymore. We've only got limited capacity to make decisions and to think about things every day. And I know that the more decisions I have to make in the day, the more grumpy I am in the evening when I get asked more questions from the kids about every other thing that I need to. I might, yeah. I've actually, I've probably made 500 decisions today. I don't, I can't make any more. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. And my kids <laughs> we are finite. That. We're not robots, as you said. Yeah. Well, my kids have heard that too. I'm like, you know what? Mommy's super tired. Like, I just can't, I know that you want to know this right now, but I can't handle this right now. And I actually mm. think it's okay to say that to our kids. Mm. That they understand, Absolutely. you know what? There's times when we've reached our limit too. But if we do it in a way that it's more like that versus why are you asking me, which is what we really want to do. Mm. We're also teaching them in life that you can be frustrated and you can be tired, but you can tell other people how you're feeling and set some expectations or boundaries in a respectful way. Mm. I agree. And so, yeah, but I, yeah, and I would always leave a buffer. If you've got kids, leave a buffer. Do not schedule hundred percent of your time. Like it's an exercise no. in failure. <laughs> Because, yeah, like even right now, my kids will not need me. I am on the couch upstairs making sure that they're getting their stuff done. I'm trying to work on my iPad and I want to do something on my in my office. And the moment I come down, that's the moment that they need me. But I know if I yeah. stayed on that couch, <laughs> they wouldn't need me for hours. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, it's those afternoon uh. naps from their first year all over again. If I tried to sleep, <laughs> that's when they woke up. If I didn't sleep, they slept for hours. Well, I hope you enjoyed part one of my chat with Rosemary Penner. And perhaps you've got a new appreciation for how valuable a professional plan and support system is if, like Rosemary, you're running a demanding studio and supporting a busy family. So don't do it alone. Join us at Top Music Pro. You can choose the tier that's perfectly designed for you at topmusicpro.com. So next week, we're going to resume our talk with Rosemary and you're going to hear what technology Rosemary can't live without, a big change she's planning in her studio, and you're going to get inspiration from two of her favorite books. I'm Tim Topham. You're listening to the Topcast from topmusic.co. I'll see you next time. For more information about this episode and to find out how to enhance your own teaching, visit topmusic.co. You'll find everything you need for your studio from lesson plans to cheat sheets, quick win teaching ideas and guides on how to build your teaching business. Plus, you'll be connected to a global community of the world's top music teachers. And when you're ready, join hundreds of other teachers around the world by becoming a Top Music Pro member and get access to all our bonus content and flagship courses. And don't forget to follow topmusic.co on social media and subscribe to this podcast wherever you listen to it. That's all for today. We'll see you in the studio.